Okay. So I was in the middle of an example, and I stopped at a psychological moment. I was doing an example of plotting this uh, uh, discharge uh, function, the current as a function of time. Um, For the uh, for these specific values for this specific circuit, and I went through and I calculated what the initial current would uh, would be uh, once you um, close the circuit once the uh, uh, capacitor is allowed to. Just start. by the way, I'm sorry. This is um, our new circuit diagram actually no longer includes the battery. I used that long. I used that circuit so that I could calculate the initial current. But now, now that I have the initial current, I no longer need the battery. That was just for computational purposes. The real circuit, of course, doesn't actually have a battery because we're discharging the capacitor. OK. So the current flows. It's the initial current that flows is related to the potential difference that the battery created across the capacitor when it charged the capacitor. Once the capacitor charged, it had its own potential difference, and that potential difference was the same as the potential difference that the battery caused. And so that's why I used the three volts here. Okay. But the battery itself is not actually in the circuit. Right. Uh, okay. And then I said, what's the deal with RC? Well, I can calculate it. And we got that it was one ohm farad. And then I went to some pains to show that the product of an ohm times a farad is actually just seconds. Okay. Which uh, is interesting, I said. In fact, I said it was crucial. And that's where I stopped. So let me pick up on that point. First of all, the analysis that I went through to show that an ohm times a farad is actually just seconds was useful. It was helpful, I hope. I hope it was interesting. But it wasn't all that necessary, meaning that there was another way we could have realized much more quickly that, the ohm, that an ohm times a farad had to be seconds. And it goes like this. Look at, the, uh, look at this, term, uh, this factor here, e to the minus t over rc. Now, this t over rc thing is the exponent of this function, OK? Take a closer look at that, OK? So this is, this, is the, uh, this is the exponent. But just by mathematical and, frankly, physical definition, exponents cannot have units. Well, you know t, being time, has units of seconds. The exponent overall cannot have any seconds, so that means the denominator likewise must also have units of seconds so that the units would divide out. So with that line of argument, we could have said in advance uh, that r times c must have units of seconds. And I didn't have to go to the trouble of actually calculating it. However, it's always, well, it's always nice uh, to check once in a while and confirm that, uh, in fact, your <coughs> expectations are met by the mathematics. So r times c has units of seconds. And that's interesting, and that's important. Let's see what's going on. <clears throat> Since R times C, that product of the resistance and the capacitance, you know, so the, the 10 ohms times the 0.1 farad, that product has units of time. That's, that makes us want to think that R times C is, in fact, a time. And it is, or can be, OK? Uh, because since R times C has units of seconds, uh, and in fact, if I were to actually do that, I would say r times c is equal to what? One second. Now, what does that mean? Does that mean anything? Well, let's consider. Let me let t equal one second, which, of course, is simply, in this example, equal to r times c. Okay? Well, if I do that, since I already know that r times c is equal to one second itself, then, I'll have, then I will ask the question, what is the current at one second? What is the, in other words, one second after I closed the, closed the switch, one second after the current started flowing through the, through the bulb from the resistor, what can I say about the current there? OK. So let's see. R times C is equal to one second. So our new function. And our function, our final form is the initial current, 0 0.3 amps, times e to the minus t over one second. Okay. That's our final function. That's the function that we want to graph. Okay. 
And I, I, I could do that. I will do that. But I want to answer the other question first, which is, what is the value of the current at uh, after one one second after I have uh, after the current starting to flow? Okay. Then I'll just substitute that in. I at T equals RC is equal to 0 0.3 amps times E raised to the minus uh, R times C, because that's what I decided that, that T is, uh, over one second. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? I mean, R times C is equal to one second. We just calculated that. But let me put that back. Let me put the denominator back. Let me just call, put it in as RC. Why did I do that? Well, because you can see now, so I, I said let's let t equal one second, which is r times c in this example. But our function already had, this in the original version here, um, our function had rc in the denominator already anyway. So I'm letting t equal to rc because rc is a time anyway. It's going to be one second, but let me put in one second later if I need it, which I don't, frankly, because notice that those are going to divide out, and I'm going to be left with just one, right? And so this becomes 0 0.3 amps times e to the negative 1, which I can write as 0 0.3 amps times 1 over e. Or, if you prefer, 0 0.3 amps divided by E. And you remember, I hope, that E is an irrational number, but it's approximately 2.718. It's a little bit smaller than 1. And so that product, then, I'm sorry, that, um, that quotient uh, is uh, I at T equals RC is equal to, uh, sorry, um, 0 0.3 amps times 1 over E, which is approximately, if you do 1 over E, you find that 1 over E, so what happens? So um, this is approximately 1 over 3 or a little bit less than 1 over 3. A little bit, I'm sorry, 1 over something a little bit less than 3, so the result is going to be approximately 0 0.3 amps times 0 0.37. If E were exactly equal to the 3, then this would be 1 third, 0.333, but it isn't. E is smaller than, than 3, and so 1 over a number smaller than 3 isn't going to be a number that's slightly larger than 0.33. Okay, fine. Uh, and so anyway, and then you calculate that. And... That works out to be uh, approximately 0 0.11 amps. Okay, so the answer to my intermediate question is, which was, how much current is flowing one second uh, after I connected it? In other words, what, how much current is flowing at a time equal to R times C after I closed the circuit and allowed the capacitor to start discharging? The answer is about 0.11 amps. And the initial current was 0.3 amps. After one second, the current that's flowing through the resistor, through the light bulb, has, or through the resistor, I guess, has dropped down to uh, just 0.11 amps, a little over a third, a third of a drop. Okay. And so then I can make a graph here, and my current starts out at 0 0.3 amps. So this is current on the vertical axis. Time after one second has passed, though, which that's equal to R times C. Our current starts at 0.3 amps. After one second, the current has dropped to roughly there. So this is our uh, R times C. Uh, I'm sorry, no. This is, this is R times C. This is the current at R times C. And so our current drops precipitously. And at one second, the current has that value, so Make sure I cross there. 
and I'll use a different color because. So our current at t equals zero is initial current is 0.3 amps. At once after one second has passed, the current has dropped to there, and then for the rest of the way, it decreases. Sorry, it decreases to zero um, um, asymptotically. All right, so that's a rough sketch of what our graph looks like. Okay, and then I really want to draw your attention to this time equaling the product of the resistance and the capacitance. Now let's go take let's go back and take a more general look at this. So I have this function here. And it decays exponentially, as we've discussed. And I've hinted, in the example that I just did, I'm over here racing the board, by the way. I've hinted that the product of the resistance and the capacitance, R times C there, has some particular significance, and it does. The, and the hint of the significance of R times C uh, is that it has units of seconds. Okay? So what, uh, what's going on there? Let's, as I said, let's take a more general uh, look at this. So if I take this expression, I'm going to copy it over here, just so I can kind of work with it. So I'm just, I'm just copying it. The function, the current changes as a function of time, and the initial current times e to the minus t over rc. Now, the initial current, as I said, is equal to the potential difference across the capacitor divided by the resistance of the resistor that's in the circuit. So that's fine. Uh, now here's the key, here's the new key idea. This is the big one right here. We've said that R times C has units of seconds, and so I can set T equal to RC if I want to. Now I want to justify wanting to. <clears throat> if I substitute that value in, this is shorthand for T equals RC, then this becomes I naught E to the, and now I'm going to let T equal RC. So I see T here, I'm going to replace it with R times C because minus R times C, that's divided by what's in the denominator. So it's R times RC over RC, which I just did that, and of course that's equal to 1 there. <clears throat> so this ends up being, and I'm repeating myself again, now I'm doing it for the general equation, not for the specific example. So this becomes uh, 1 over E times I naught. I naught, well, let me do it in slow motion. I naught times E to the minus 1, which is I naught times 1 over E, or as we usually write it, uh, <clears throat> we put the 1 over E in front, I naught. Okay. And that is, again, E is irrational, so we're approximating, but 0 0.37 I naught. And so, to give you the starting point and the ending point, The current at a time t equals rc is, takes on a value that's about 37% of the current's starting value. And the neat thing about this relationship here is that it is true no matter what the value of r and the value of c is. Okay? Somehow, it is the value of r and the value of C multiplied together that tells you something interesting about the circuit. Specifically, the, how much resistance and how much capacitance there is in the circuit seems to dictate how much time it takes for the circuit, uh, sorry, for the current to drop from its initial value down to about 37% of its initial value. Okay? 
Uh, and the really important thing about this is that the time that it takes the current to drop from maximum down to just 37% of its initial value uh, is determined by the resistance, it's determined by the capacitance, it's determined by the product of those two things actually, but the resistance and the capacitance we control. I went and picked a resistor out of the box and I picked a capacitor off the shelf and I wired them together with my battery. I can control how rapidly this current de decreases by an appropriate choice of resistor and an appropriate choice of capacitor. Okay? So I can design my circuit so that the current drops at whatever rate I want for whatever reason I'm building the circuit. Okay? Now, if you're going into electrical engineering, that's totally cool because that's actually you know, three courses, three fourths of your job right there. It's designing a circuit that rises and falls at a rate that you want so that whatever device you're designing uh, will operate the way you want it to operate. Uh, for the, um, the um, uh, biological and medical sciences, we tend to look at it in the opposite sense, which is the resistance of our nerves and the capacitance of the, uh, of the, uh, of, um, of the, uh, of the, of the, the, I'm sorry, the capacitance of the nerve cells and there's fatty tissues, there's lipids and everything that act as either capacitor plates. So the membranes of cells tend to act as capacitor plates. The outer sheaths, the lipid sheaths tend to be uh, dielectric material. So you have a dielectric constant, all the rest of it. So in other words, with, uh, in, in anatomy and biology and physiology and so on, you're already given or, you know, the, the resistance of the capacitance of nerves, for example, are built in. So, so in fact, it's the other way around. You can look at how long it takes. So what happens? So uh, you know, you had a nerve stimulus, and then the threshold rises up. Once the threshold rises above, uh, so once the potential rises above threshold, the nerve fires. You get a transfer of charge. You get a flow of current. Okay, and how how rapidly does that current uh, drop drop down back below threshold? Okay. Uh, and the answer is, it depends on how much resistance there is in your nerve fibers, what the capacitance of your nerve fibers is, okay? So you can actually observe, uh, I'm sorry, you can actually, yes, you can actually observe the action of the nerve signals and from that deduce what the resistance and capacitance of your nerves uh, and your nerve cells and your nerve sheaths and so on, what those values are. So you can learn an awful lot about the, the structure of your, uh, of your biology simply by observing the time constant. Oh, did I not use that term? That's what this is called. It's called a time constant because it has, well, let me, let me tell you what this is. So the symbol we give it is tau because it's time, Greek letter T related to our letter, or Greek letter tau related to our letter T for time. The, the tau is defined as simply R times C. It's called the time constant. Time because we've already, I spent a lot of, uh, well, time talking about that. It has R times C is units of seconds. So it is a time. And it's constant because of, for a given circuit, of course, R and C are typically constant. And we're not talking about joule heating here, so R, R remains constant. So this is, so tau is the time constant. It is simply the product of R times C. And with that, I can write my current function as I naught e to the minus T over tau. And that's usually the way you see it. Okay. And so when T is equal to tau, then we drop down, your, your current has dropped from its initial value down all the way, it's dropped by 63%, it is now down to just 37% of its uh, initial value, its initial current, okay? And again, either if you're designing a circuit, you get to choose R and you get to choose C uh, so that your current dies down at whatever rate you desire. On the other hand, if you are given a circuit ready-made and you want to analyze it, 
like I said, the human body, you observe the time constant and from it deduce what the resistance is and what the capacitance is. And once you know the resistance of your nerves, you know your capacitance of your nerves, uh, then you can deduce all sorts of properties of the nerves themselves. So how, what are they made of? What are they constructed from? What are the separation distance between the, the things that are acting as plates? What's the dielectric material? And so on. Lots of things you can learn just by watching the current die down. All right, well, that's, uh, and so that's RC circuits for you. And so nice application of a whole lot of physics. Uh, very good, very important, uh, and I hope you enjoyed it. I don't know what we're doing next. Actually, I do.